in order to use inverse operations to solve equations, we need to know our properties of equalities, and there are four of them. So the addition property of the equality states that if one quantity equals another, so algebraically we write if A equals B, then adding the same quantity to both sides keeps the equation balanced or equal. So in this case, we're representing that by adding C to both sides. Of course, the subtraction property of equality says if, again, A equals B, then subtracting the same quantity from both sides of the equation will still keep the equation balanced or equal. The multiplication property of equality states that if one quantity equals another, then multiplying both sides by the same quantity That's kind of a big equal sign, but that multiplying both sides will keep it equal or balanced. And the division property of equality says that, again, if one quantity equals another, then dividing both sides by the same quantity will keep it balanced or equal. And, of course, with division, we do have to specify that C cannot equal zero. We always have to specify that with division, that we can't divide by zero, that's undefined. So now that we know uh, what, we, what we can do to both sides of an equation, let's look at a couple of two-step equations. So let's start with 3x minus 7 equals 11. This is called a two-step equation because there are two operations happening to x. It's being multiplied by 3, and then 7 is being subtracted from it. So when we solve for it, we're looking for what number multiplied by 3 and 7 being subtracted from that product equals 11. Now we might be able to logically reason that out, but one way that we solve this equation is by isolating x. And the way that we isolate it is by inverse operations. So we look at the two operations that are going on, multiplication and subtraction. Now if we were doing the problem, if we knew what x was, we would multiply first, and then we would subtract. But when we do inverse operation, when we're working backwards, we start by undoing addition or subtraction, and we undo the minus 7 by adding 7 to both sides. So 3x minus 7 plus 7, well you can see that the minus 7 plus 7 cancels each other out, and we have 3x equals 18. There's only one operation left to undo, that's the multiplication, and we undo multiply by 3, by dividing both sides by 3. So x equals 6. The nice thing about these is you can actually check your work by going back and replacing or evaluating the x with 6. So does, and you can check it, it's 3, so we replace the x with 6. Does 3 times 6 minus 7 equal 11? And three times, now we do the order of operations, multiply first, 18 minus 7. And does that equal 11? And 18 minus 7 does equal 11, so we did it right. So now let's try, let, now let's try another one. How about um, g over 2 plus... 5 equals 9. So we look at the operations. There is division and there is addition. So again, we start by undoing the addition or subtraction. So we undo the plus 5 by subtracting 5 from both sides of the equation. So that leaves me with g divided by 2 equals 4. Now, a lot of times students want to skip right here and say, oh, g equals 2, because they're thinking 4 divided by 2, but we're actually asking what number divided by 2 equals 4. So just stay consistent and do your inverse operation. Show your work on both sides. So to undo divide by 2, I multiply both sides by 2. And multiplying by 2 undoes the division by 2, and g equals 8. And then you go, oh, yeah, of course. 8 divided by 2 equals the 4, not 4 divided by 2 equals 2. But again, we can check our work. We can check our answer by replacing 
g with its value. So 8, and we see does 8 divided by 2 plus 5 actually equal 9? And now we do it in the order, in the correct order, dividing first. So 4 plus 5, does that equal 9? And yes, 9 equals 9. So that's the secret to, two, to solving two-step equations, which is to undo the operations in reverse order, starting by undoing the addition or subtraction, and then undo, multiply, or divide, and show your work on both sides. It will help, help you keep from making as many mistakes. And then check your answer. Let's try writing and solving two-step equations. So if Tim is ordering t-shirts for Mesa, and each shirt costs $8, and shipping is $15, and there is no sales tax, uh, we need to define the variables for the quantities that are changing. You know, you can go with, well, what's changing is how many shirts, and then, of course, the amount of money you spend based on how many shirts you get, and that's pretty straightforward. Um, and you can use S for shirts and C for cost, um, I like to just go with generic X and Y. So X is going to be the number of shirts, and that is a symbol for a number, if you didn't know that. And then Y will be the total cost. So part B says, let's write an equation for the total cost of the shipment. What it didn't ask me is what is not changing. And it's important to see what's not changing. So maybe off to the side, I kind of write for myself. What's not going to change is it doesn't say that shipping depends on how many or how heavy or price, which some websites do that, you know, up to a certain amount that you spend. It's a certain amount, and then if you spend over that, it goes up. But according to this story problem anyway, what's not changing is the shipping fee of fifteen dollars and that's helpful to know so the total cost y depends on how many shirts you get and they cost oh and the other thing that doesn't change we, we should have said is the price per shirt so each shirt costs eight dollars and so we're gonna do eight times how many shirts we get plus the 15. And now it says how many shirts can the club get if they have $100? So, well, we have to recognize what is that. Well, one thing that's going to help us is to go back to our variables and look at where money is. A lot of times students just want to plug it in for x because it's convenient. 8 times 100 is 800 plus 15. Hopefully when you get an answer of 815 you go, what? They can order 815 shirts for $100? That doesn't make any sense. So again, X is the number of shirts. And if they had said they, they need to order 27 shirts, well then yes, do 8 times 27 and add 15 and that'll tell you how much it's going to cost. But in this case, we just have a total amount or amount of money. So I'm going to replace y. So sometimes I even off to the side write for myself. y equals 100. So I tell myself whether I think it's the x or the y. So since it is the y, I'm going to replace the y in my equation with 100. So 100 equals 8x plus 15. So now I'm going to solve it. And it's a two-step equation. So I start by undoing the addition. So I subtract 15 from both sides. So 85 equals 8x. And now I undo the multiplication by dividing both sides by 8. And you can see it's almost 11. So 8 goes into 85 10 times with some left over. So sometimes it's appropriate to have a decimal. So 10.625 would be the decimal, but 10 shirts, or 10 t-shirts, that's all they can get with $100. If it wasn't for that uh, shipping cost, they could get uh, a couple more. They could get 12 with a little bit left over, but that's all they can get with what they've got so far.
When we solve literal, literal equations, it means there are equations, usually there are formulas that people use, such as, how about the area of a triangle? Area equals one-half base times height. And then they'll ask you to solve it for, let's say, height. You're still going to do inverse operations. It's just weird because we don't have a lot of numbers. In this case, we do have one-half. So how do we undo um, multiplication by one-half? Well, we would want to divide by one-half, but you can see how weird that looks. So what could we do instead of dividing by a half? Well, I'm going to rewrite the equation so I have a little more room. Well, when we divide by a fraction, we multiply by the reciprocal. So really what I'm doing is I'm multiplying both sides of the equation by the reciprocal of 2, which is 2 over 1, or just 2. So 2 times the area equals base times height of a triangle. And then, well, there's only one e operation left to undo, and that is the multiplication by the base. So I undo multiplication with division. So my answer is 2 times the area divided by base equals the height. Let's try another one. How about um, perimeter of a rectangle? 2 times length plus 2 times width. And we're going to solve this one for width. So we need to isolate W, or the width. Well, we first want to get rid of the addition. 2L is being added to it right now, so I subtract 2L. Well, let's use a cursive L, otherwise it looks like 21. I subtract 2L from both sides. So on the left, I have perimeter minus 2L, or 2 times the length, equals 2 times the width. Now I need to undo 2 times the width. I just want to know what 1 width is. So I divide both sides by 2. And I could just leave it as P minus 2L all divided by 2 equals W. But I see that I could simplify that if I um, split it up. And what I mean by that is I divide each term by 2. So P divided by 2 minus 2L divided by 2. And so simplified, I can either write P halves or P divided by 2 minus L equals W, or some people even like to, because we don't like to see division in, a, fra in, in a, a formula if we don't have to, P divided by 2 is the same as 1 half P. So 1 half of the perimeter minus the length equals the width.